so Hassan, I'll just Hassan was uh, able to participate in practice today, non-contact. We're going to reevaluate this afternoon, but hopefully he's cleared to do contact tomorrow. Obviously, he came back to the game uh, and played after he had hit his shoulder. So uh, it doesn't appear to be something that you know we'll we'll keep him out, but we're going to just continue to evaluate it, see how he is later today, and then make a decision uh, for practice tomorrow. So you guys are in kind of a unique situation with the Big 12 schedule this season where you don't play opponents you know, every time. But uh, how far have your guys come to where you're taking on Oklahoma? Where did you come from the previous matchup to now? Yeah, we feel like we've improved as a team, that um, we're better defensively. Our rotations are quicker, um, better in transition than what we were, uh, guard the dribble better. Um, so I think. You know, we have more of a mindset and mentality that we need to get stops, especially later in the game. We learned our lesson and learned a lot from the last time that we played them because we didn't do that. Uh, offensively, I think we're sharing the ball uh, at a high rate. We're getting into the paint more. Um, Kurt Jones is playing at a high level. Uh, that's been a huge asset for us. So I think, you know, we're an entirely different team than we were close to two months ago when we played them. So, uh, we need to come out with great intent, and all those areas we've improved need to show up for us uh, on Wednesday. TJ, TJ, of all the things that, that Taman does well, what what sticks out to you the most about him? Um, his, you know, just his mental toughness to bring whatever the game needs to make his team win, and uh, that can be an aggressive drive to the paint. That can be an aggressive defensive you know, guard the basketball, it can be chased down uh, a really, you know, challenging loose ball or 50-50 ball on the glass. Um, it can be just making a really intelligent play. I think he's he's got the ability uh, in, in big moments to focus on doing whatever the team needs in that moment to be successful. So I wouldn't confine that to just one skill or one trait. I just think he's he's got that intangible winning quality about him. We've talked a number of times this year about how balanced you guys are offensively. Is that by design going back you know, before the season or during the season, or has it kind of organically come about? Yeah, I think it's organically come about. And I think for everybody, everybody in our offense has a job that they need to do. And on a given night, depending on how things are being defended, it may call for more drives to the basket. It may call for. Um, as we drive the basketball, certain rotations, the defense picks. What we need is for everybody to be aggressive and ready for that opportunity. There's been games, you know, I mean, last time we, you know, we played uh, Oklahoma, Hassan had 12, Rob had 12. We were able to play them on the roll, on the pocket pass. They were able to score the ball. So I think more than anything, it just comes down to, you know, everybody on our team being ready to attack and be aggressive. And then understanding what decisions the defense is making and what is available for us to attack on a given night. So it's it's happened organically over time. I guess the way you describe it there, it's not balanced scoring is not necessarily the the goal. It's how having multiple weapons, I guess, on the floor. Yeah, it's it's our ability to have, you know, any of the guys that we play, you know, play to their strengths and take advantage. And so I don't think you can look at a game and say, hey, we want you know everybody to score 12 points or whatever that is, because you just don't know how teams are going to play things. Guys can get hot. Certain, um, certain things that you're doing could be working really well. And so you just want to attack aggressively and just get in the paint and make the read or the play that comes from it. So uh, it's not necessarily by design, but I, I do think like all of our guys offensively being ready to score, being ready to attack, and then the offensive rebounding piece being a big part of our offense, I think, gives us you know really good balance that way. Obviously, that has led to a ton of success. But I guess is there a flip side to the coin where we've talked about where you guys struggle at times to close out games that you don't have a, a Jaron Holmes and Isaiah Brockington's go get us buckets for the next two minutes? Yeah, I don't think so as much because I I would trust you know guys that we have on our team that have done it. Um, you know, early we saw Milan hit some big shots. We've seen. Keyshawn in some key stretches of games take over. Uh, we've seen Taman do it. Uh, you know, Kurt Jones has hit some big, big shots. So uh, I don't necessarily know that we don't have, you know, uh, a guy to do that. I think we have multiple guys that can. 
And I think it's it's more about, you know, how are they guarding us? Who has the advantage in that situation? Maybe even who has a hot hand that night. Um, but I think we have the ability to have multiple guys make a big play for us late. TJ, what's the value of having the bulk of your lineup be comprised of guys who probably been overlooked and underestimated throughout their careers on their journey here and how that's fueled them and they didn't go, you know, boo-hoo, woe is me, they made something of themselves on the way here. Yeah, I mean, we certainly lean into those stories of the guys in our program, um, you know, that maybe coming out of high school uh, weren't seen as Big 12 players or weren't seen as Big 12 starters or guys that can make a Big 12 team win. Uh, the chip on the shoulder thing, you know, that means a lot to me. And at the same time, it's just about every guy on our team doing what you can do uh, to be at your best. But certainly when you have, you know, the added motivation of knowing that people passed up on you or people doubted you and now you're in a place where they believe in you, they care about you, they have your back, and you're developing, it should allow guys to play with a tremendous sense of confidence. And that's what we really want to do here is, is continue to develop our guys and continue to build their confidence um, regardless of what their starting point is coming in. But certainly, you love those guys that have like that little bit more intestinal fortitude to say, you know what, someone doubted me, someone slept on me, somebody didn't think I could do this. And uh, I use that for motivation. That, that certainly is appealing. And the uh, question I was going to ask after the last game was, uh, you, obviously, you're built on toughness. That's what you hang your hat on, the you know, intensity on the defensive end. A, how hard is it to do that 40 minutes, night in, night out, and for every practice? And, and B, what do you do? You know, do you cut guys some slack when you know every now and then maybe you don't do it for 40 minutes, you do it for 25 or something like that? Uh, first part, I'd say um, we take a lot of pride in consistency, so doing the same thing every single day. Go to bed at the same time, pretty much eat the same thing, watch the same film. You know, I mean, we, we take uh, pride in the routine and the habit of doing the same thing on a daily basis, believing that when you do that, that you're going to be consistent in your performance. So, um, you know, we expect to play hard for 40 minutes. We expect to defend with intensity for 40 minutes. Uh, and that's what we demand in practice. And, and when we do that, we play our best. So. We're going to continue to demand that standard, uphold that standard. In terms of, you know, at times having slippage, you know, I, I wish we could just do a great job staying focused in the moment because I feel like the times that we've had slippage, it's, it's more times in game where maybe the score one way or another isn't as close and maybe we don't value that next possession, that next ball pressure, the next closeout, the next block out, the way we would love to. So um, we're not going to, you know, demand or um, strive for any standard other than our best. And I still feel like our team hasn't played our best yet. You know, we've had some good games. We've had some good moments. We've had things we've done well. We've also had our share of challenges. Um, but I still think we could play our best. And to do that, it's going to be setting the tone with our defense and our defense, you know, turning into offense. To go back to something you were talking about earlier where you were explaining how you guys have been able to find players who maybe weren't labeled as Big 12 starters when they were being recruited, how, how do you find those players? What traits do you look for when recruiting those players, whether it's out of high school with kids like Taman or out of the portal with kids like Jackson and maybe Curtis? I'd say, you know, it's important that you get to know them as people, that you know their story. You know, I think a lot of times uh, for me, it's how hard do you work. And everybody, there's not anybody you recruit that's going to say you don't work hard. But when you're talking to a recruiter, are they always in the gym? Are they always coming from a workout? Are they always, is there always a ball bouncing in the background? That's important. Um, then when you know, you know, what their aspirations are, you know, you want to be, want to make sure there's an alignment there, that what you believe they can do is what they believe. So there's a shared vision. It's not, you know, they think one thing and you think another, because I think that will ultimately get in the way if that's if it's not transparent and totally honest. Um, certainly there's a level of ability, you know, like we like, we like guards that, you know, can, you know, pressure the basketball, generate turnovers, you know, whether that means strength, length, competitive spirit, those things help 
Uh, when you play our defense, we like versatility on the front line, guys that are mobile. And so those things are all part of it. But I'd say at the core, it's what are you trying to do and how hard are you willing to work for it? Um, and then I'd say the last piece of it is just when you evaluate their support network as well. It's are we all on the same page? Are we all, you know, are we all rowing in the same direction? Because I think so many times if somebody has a different vision than what the one that you're going to have for them, then, you know, you see some things that don't work. Along the same recruiting lines, you know, there's so many things that go into recruiting players these days with NIL, the transfer portal, but I still think the greatest tool to recruit is winning, and you guys are obviously doing that at a high level this season. How much do you feel like your success has maybe helped you guys get in the door with high school prospects? Because I know you hosted five or six this past weekend. Yeah, I mean, I think more than anything, we're, what our hope is is that when people look at our program, families or recruits, they look at it and say, if we go to Iowa State, that's a program that I will be successful in life in whatever I choose to do. I, obviously, basketball is a big part of it, but we want to build the structure, the discipline, the accountability so that we're, we're building the guys in our program to be great business owners, community leaders, husbands, fathers, whatever they choose to be beyond basketball as well. So. Um, what matters to me is that when somebody watch, watches Iowa State basketball play, they say there's integrity, there's effort, there's unity. All those things stand out because now we believe that those young people are going to be successful for the long haul. And as much as we want to win every game, and it's great when we're able to be successful, uh, we really want to build men that are going to be you know, productive members of society. So um, the winning is, is, is certainly part of when you do the hard work that's something that you may be able to reap those benefits so we'll just continue to do the daily work and see what happens to go back to the balance scoring discussion how much does that also allow maybe space for guys to struggle in terms of not having to feel like they've got to do everything or figure it out immediately where you have a go-to score and if they're struggling you guys are losing does that make sense I yeah, no, I think, you know, when you're a team and you have a guy that averages north of 20 or a big-time scorer and then maybe some others not as much and a team can take that away, that can throw off the rhythm or balance of your offense. And fortunately for us, you know, with having some of that balance, we want everybody to play their best and be, and be ready to play their best. But I think we can still keep a rhythm and a balance to how we play as a team even if one guy has an off night or if two guys have an off night. Now, ideally, that doesn't happen. Um, and I think that when you focus on creating offense off your defense and you're scoring in transition, that creates opportunities that if you do it the right way and you make the right play, that maybe you get some three-on-ones, two-on-ones, you know, four-on-twos, advantage situations where, you know, you, you can play better. So I do think it gives us an advantage because – you know, somebody having foul trouble or an off night doesn't necessarily, you know, derail our offense. It, it's our offense is able to be, you know, fluid and consistent, um, regardless maybe of if, if one guy, you know, doesn't have the best night. But hopefully they all do. TJ, the, this home court winning streak is, is very real. I mean, obviously, um, you guys have this program hasn't done it. I would say it hasn't done it for. 20 plus years what does anything stick out to you you know any couple moments during this 16 game 16 17 whatever it is games does anything stick out to you yeah I'd say more than anything our guys have done a great job preparing for the games so they played well our fans and our crowds have been awesome you know so I mean when I'm thinking of what stands out I'm thinking more of the great crowds we've had and the energy we've had and we hadn't played as well uh, I'm thinking about our guys and their preparation for the games because in order to be successful, um, you know, obviously you've got to prepare well, you've got to play well, you've got to have a great home court. So I think, you know, we're just fortunate that all those things have worked together up to this point. And for us to continue to move forward, we've got one game in front of us and, and we've got to do our best in preparation. We've got to do our best to be ready to to play better than we did against that team last time. and then. You know, we're excited about the crowd that we'll have, and hopefully it all comes together for us.